So what's the deal? I'm moving. <laughs> I had my dream come true and I had have an RV to live in, which really was a blessing because what uh, the reason why I chose the RV was because of cost. Uh, when I uh, was trying to organize coming here to the campus, everything was uh, like the door, the door was open. All right, you may be thinking, what, is she crazy? She has her dream RV to live in. And it's cute and it's quaint. And well, this was the thing. So everything happened very quickly. In fact, up until the very last day here that I was at the Lifestyle Center and on campus uh, and not a student, the door, the door didn't open till the day I was going to Wisconsin. I mean, it was like I was sweating bullets. And then the door, and then the Lord's like, oh yeah, you're in. Just like that. Oh yeah, that that day before I left. Now I knew that I had the opportunity to stay at the dorm, but I didn't go and look at the dorms because I really was praying about the RV. Why? Because the RV was going to be cheap. They had offered it to me for a hundred fifty dollars, which was within my budget, and I had heard that the electricity was only going to be a hundred dollars for hookup. And I was actually praying that maybe they would consider doing it less because I'm a student. Okay, now. I didn't look at the dorms, and uh, number two, the dorms were $89 a week, so it was close to $400 just to rent a room, and I thought, you know, that's that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, uh, I got my dream, and you see I have this really awesome RV, but then the issue started. Number one, first was with the heat. Uh, I mean, it was cold, and I didn't have any heat, and I bought the propane tank, or, well, actually, you know, God provided. I got I got the the propane tank filled, and then it probably took a good um, week and a half, almost two weeks, before they finally hooked me up to the big tank. And then there was some glitches along the way. It would be blowing cold air, but then finally the heat started kicking in. So praise the Lord, I got heat. Well, then I started having um, from the very beginning water problems. Uh, when he first hooked it up, I had really good water, but then it seemed within a week the water got bad. I lost all my pressure. Uh, that was the first thing that happened. So here I am with this rash on my body. And, you know, I'm, I'm like really uh, apprehensive about what's going on with the multiple myeloma because I need to stay clean. And I'm sweating every night and my sheets are soaking wet. And then I realized I don't even have a washer and dryer. I mean, I didn't even realize it. It's like, I don't know, washer and dryer. And then the shower. So, I, I mean, the shower was just dripping out. This went on for weeks. Uh, the shower head broke, and then I didn't even have a shower head. I had just a, a hose with water dripping out of it. And finally, after I don't know how many weeks, uh, they let me go over and take some showers at their um, RV. But they didn't even have good water pressure over there because it's an RV. And I just until, uh, I think, a... Two weeks ago, I finally got water pressure and they figured it out. They had a screen on the hose. So the water pressure came back. Doing my juicing took, it takes like an hour. And then I couldn't even wash in the sink because the sink is so tiny. And then with the water situation, the water is dripping out. And I'm like, I couldn't juice for weeks. And then the bed. And of course, I don't know if you know about the bed, but I want to show you the bed. This is what we did to try to fix the bed. So this is the original mattress, which um, is completely awful. You know, there's just nothing there. And then my friend brought over this. That's what I've been sleeping on. That's awful. And it hasn't helped. So now my back is, my back is really bad. Um, my back is really bad. So then what ended up happening is um, my good friends started saying, Maybe the RV isn't such a good idea. You know, they're like planting little seeds. Maybe you should consider going over to the dorm and checking it out. And I'd be like, well, no, you know, I, I've lived off the grid. And they're like, well, you know, this isn't, you don't have to. Um, I mean, you know, you've got special circumstances here. You don't have to suffer. So, you know, and then I began to realize the fellowship. I was really missing out. You know, everybody at the dorms were doing stuff. They were doing things together. And I didn't even know half the stuff that was going on on the campus because I'm here by myself in the RV. And I really started feeling isolated. And I love everybody here. So it was affecting me. I mean, everything just kept piling up. So I, I, Mary said, why don't you just go over 
and look at the dorms. And, and that day I promised her I would, and I did. And I went to all the dorms and they were very nice. I looked at the older woman's dorm, which would be me. <laughs> and when I got there, I was pleasantly surprised. Beautiful. I mean, it's a really old building, but it had a huge living room that was so becoming with a big fireplace, had a little dining area, had a huge kitchen and creaky old steps that goes upstairs uh, to a hardwood floor um, bedrooms. And now it's old. And, you know, I, 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 when I first got in the rooms, I'm like, Ooh, ugh, this, this, these are, this is really old. But then I started looking around and I saw the, the, I don't know, the peace. I saw the beauty. I saw, I just started seeing something different. I didn't look at the old. I didn't look at the peeling paint. I didn't look at the creaky floors. I looked at the character and the warmth. And I thought, you know what? I could really stay here. I could stay here. And I have room. I have room. I mean, in this RV, I can't even lift my weights and do any of my sit-ups or push-ups or... Uh, I, for six months, it's not, it just it got to happen. So uh, I felt kind of bad because I love Steve and Mary. They were the ones who offered me the RV and they were so kind. But uh, here's the caveat. So um, this is the best part of the story. So I went back to the RV and I started praying about it. And I said, you know, Lord, maybe uh, it was it, it was really my will <laughs> that that wanted this this RV and maybe, you know, I was wrong. I was wrong and I wasn't really listening to you. You know, that happens. You get ahead a, a of the Lord and you think it's his will. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. But uh, what ended up happening is I prayed and then I was brave enough to ask Sylvia uh, the next day about uh, moving into the woman's dorm after I saw it. I was kind of scared because, you know, they had gone through a committee to vote me, um, vote that I could stay at the RV. And, you know, that's when they decided to charge me 150 for utilities instead of a hundred. And that was really difficult to swallow because it really upped the price of staying here. Um, so that was kind of disappointing news, but at least I was here, uh, even though the utilities were extremely high, I was still praising the Lord. And so Sylvia said, yeah, I'll, I'll take it before the board and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you in a couple days. So a couple days was a couple, like two days ago. And she grabbed me in class and she says, I have good news. I have good news. And uh, she said, uh, she brought me into her office and she says, you can move into the girls' dorm, to the women's dorm, Sunnyside. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then she says, okay, and, um, and um, your rent is going to be due every month and we're going to charge you $5 a day. So now that comes out to $40 a week, okay? And then, and I guess it didn't hit me because I'm thinking, okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I, it was 90, $89 a week. I, it was supposed to be $90 a week, $400. And I said, okay, so what is it again? She says it's $40 a week. And, and she says that includes everything. You don't have to worry about all that electricity and utilities. And she says, it's just, just $5. And she said, don't worry about paying, um, weekly. You just pay it once a month. And then I, I guess it didn't really hit me until after class because I'm sitting in class. I'm trying not to think about it. And then when I get done with class, I'm like, what just happened? What just happened? I, I just, you know, it's God, it's God, you know, it's God, of course, it's, it's, it's him taking care of me, knowing what my needs are. So now not only am I in the woman's dorm where the accommodations are so much better, but I am paying, I'm paying what? $160 a month, which is a hundred times better than what I'm paying here. I'm saving so much money. And you know, um, every we all have right let's raise your hand if you have problems with you know like making ends meet right but doesn't the lord always come through when you need him right right so so i'm moving out today and um we're going to be saying well i'm not moving out today but i'm packing everything up i'm getting everything organized and you will not be seeing me here but you'll be seeing me at sunnyside so that's the news all right and i'll take you over there and we'll have a little tour